This is the Curatuck Beach Lighthouse located at 1101 Corolla Village Road, Corolla, North Carolina, area code 27927. This is the northernmost lighthouse in North Carolina and it is constructed entirely out of unpainted brick that has been scarred slightly by the elements. This is the oil house which also serves as the entrance to the lighthouse. The lighthouse is equipped with a first order Fresnel lens that flashes three times per minute. The flash characteristic is on for three seconds and off for 17 seconds. I don't know why, but the animation on this one's kind of iffy. Sometimes, though, if it's not working, moving the camera will usually turn it back on. Okay, the animation appears to be working. Let's have another look at it just to be safe. Alright, that seems to work. Now let's look at some of the other lighthouses I made for this game. By the way, I take requests, so if there are any lighthouses you'd like to see me uh, make in this game, I'll be happy to make them when I have free time. Now we're going back down the outer banks, going southbound. The next lighthouse is located in Nags Head on Bodie Island. Some landmarks I also wrote down on this map just so I can figure out where everything is. I'll add some more as I progress in making this route. This section of land has already had tracks installed on it. This is the four track Shinkansen main line. This line runs from Washington DC to Southern Florida. This is the station at Nags Head. The two tracks on the right are for Amtrak trains that go to the North Carolina mainland and stop at Rocky Mount and Rally. This is the Outer Banks Mall. Haven't quite finished it yet. Also, could not find all of the stores that I need, so I just um, improvised using whatever stores I could find. I might actually make the stores from scratch in the future. No, I'm not really that good at making buildings. This is a huge bridge that allows North Carolina Highway 12 to travel under the railroad for a little bit. And this is Whalebone Station, which is an Amtrak only station. The Shinkansen doesn't stop here because it's too close to Nags Head. And it would cause the trains to have to slow down too quickly. Which kind of... Uh, ruins the purpose of a high-speed train. Going a little bit further south, we'll be in Bodhi Island in shortly. Well, actually, this is Bodhi Island. Over here is Bodhi Island Lighthouse Road. This road stretches from North Carolina Highway 12 to the Bodhi Island Lighthouse. I had to sink it slightly to go under the railroad because there wasn't enough room for a railroad crossing there. And then here's another crossing here for the Amtrak line. You usually want to try to avoid high-speed railroad crossings whenever you can, but 
The Amtrak line doesn't go as fast, so it's okay to have a railroad crossing here. Anyway, this road takes you all the way to the Bodhi Island Lighthouse. This lighthouse has a flash characteristic of on for two and a half seconds, off for two and a half seconds, on for two and a half seconds, and off for 22 and a half seconds. Two cycles per minute. This is the Amtrak station. Amtrak stops here right before crossing over to the mainland. The Bodie Island Lighthouse is located at 8210 Bodie Island Lighthouse Road, Nags Head, North Carolina, 27959. And that bridge you just saw is the Mark Basnight Bridge, which is a road bridge linking Hatteras Island with Bodie Island. And this is the Dexter Stetson Memorial Bridge. Named after the architect of the Cape Hatteras, Bodie Island, and Ocracoke Village lighthouses. And this is North Carolina Highway 12. And here's a railroad crossing. It's got four gates because all high-speed railroad crossings in the United States have to block both sides of the road by law. There's also a law that the speed limit has to slow down to 125 miles per hour. So it is quite unfortunate that I have to build a crossing here. I placed the name of certain towns on this map so that I can know where I'm supposed to start building them in the future. The tracks are 12 meters above sea level to protect them from flooding because Hatteras Island and the rest of the Outer Banks do have quite a bit of a flooding problem especially during hurricane season. We wouldn't have to worry ha we, we don't want to have to worry about the trains slowing down or having to stop every time there's a hurricane. After all, this is a high-speed main line that links the capital with a bunch of other towns along the coast. By the way, Hatteras Island and Bodie Island used to all be one island, but a hurricane actually cut through the island and split it into two. And now we see the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, which is located on Hatteras Island. The Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is located at 46379 Lighthouse Road, Buxted, North Carolina, 27920. At night, the lighthouse flashes once every seven and a half seconds using a DCB 224 Aero Beacon, which is an airport style beacon that has two reflectors mounted back to back. Whenever one of the reflectors passes your eye, you see a flash. The airport style beacons are actually very popular for use in modern lighthouses because they require far less maintenance than the glass Fresnel lenses of old and don't require as much money to be spent on them whenever something breaks down. However, these reflectors still aren't perfect and sometimes the light on the Cape Hatteras lighthouse actually ends up on the news because it gets stuck. In fact, quite a few times this year it failed to rotate and it had to be temporarily shut down while they waited for parts to arrive to fix it. Anyway, this is Lighthouse Road, which leads to the lighthouse, just as its name implies. <laughs> just down the road from the lighthouse, and not too far from downtown Buxton, is the Buxton train station. 
This fencing is to protect passengers of the station and make sure they only cross at the railroad crossing where it's safe. Express trains pass the station at full operating speed on the two center tracks, so it is unsafe to cross anywhere other than the railroad crossing. Hopefully the fences will prevent people from being tempted to cross anywhere else. And then this is the end of Lighthouse Road, and this is North Carolina Highway 12, which I still haven't finished building yet. It's a very long highway. This is a railroad crossing for North Carolina Highway 12. A uh, pretty simple crossing, nothing special about it. The tracks curve further to the west as they pass the town of Hatteras Village and Frisco and the ferry landing for North Carolina Highway 12. This is the George H.W. Bush Memorial Bridge, a long bridge that links Hatteras Island with Ocracoke Island. I might actually end up having to replace that with a lift bridge because um, ships are going to have to fit under here because this is also the Hatteras Inlet Crab Spawning Sanctuary. At the very least, fishing boats are going to have to fit under that bridge. So that's just a temporary placeholder until I can find something to replace it with. I might actually even need a series of lift bridges. Anyway. This is a pretty empty island, so it was pretty easy to find places to lay the tracks. Didn't really have to worry about any buildings in the way. <laughs> Okay, the tracks start curving toward the village of Ocracoke, and this is Ocracoke Station, which is located across the street from the Ocracoke Lighthouse. The Ocracoke Village Lighthouse is located at 360 Lighthouse Road in Ocracoke, North Carolina, 27960. At night, it has a fixed light, which means it doesn't rotate, flash, or do anything fancy. It's just on at night. This lighthouse is rather short compared to the other ones because it is a harbor light. Oddly enough, the light seems to be affected by the water physics in this game. I'm not really sure why that happens. Because see, you can see it clearly when you're looking at the sky, but when you're looking through it and looking at the water, it just disappears. That's why I try to shy away from using Google SketchUp models, because they tend to have a bit of issues with physics in this game. Anyway, there are six tracks now. Four tracks are used by the Shinkansen Line. The other two on the left are used by the North Carolina Department of Transportation to run a shuttle line that connects Ocracoke with Cape Lookout. This is called the Great Ocracoke Inlet Bridge. This bridge spans over the Ocracoke Inlet and it allows ships to fit under the railroad. It is a lift bridge, so it can actually lift up to make um, passage safe for s taller ships. Eh, you get the point. Lift bridges, you really gotta be careful with them though because they slow down rail travel, especially since ships have the right of way over all forms of traffic, including trains. So they can literally just halt the railroad at any time they want just to pass under the bridge. Don't want that when you're running a high speed line. In fact, this is a huge problem that Amtrak has. They have to slow down their trains to 30 miles per hour so that they can have enough time to stop in case a ship needs to use one of their bridges. That wouldn't really be too much of a problem here though because there's a train station here anyway so the trains aren't going to be going that fast anyway. Anyway, this is Portsmouth Island. Nobody lives on this island as far as I can tell, so there's no need to build a train station here.
We are traveling southbound straight through Portsmouth Island. This is the Great Island Bridge. It links Portsmouth Island with Great Island. Great Island is the island the Cape Lookout Lighthouse is located on. It's also referred to as Harker's Island because it used to be part of Harker's Island before a hurricane split the islands into three sections. Another island in that area is Shackleford Banks, which also used to be part of Harker's Island. But since this is the larger of the three islands, it's called Great Island. People also call it Harker's Island though, and it's also referred to as Core Banks, as well as the Cape Lookout National Seashore. There's virtually no way to get to the Cape Lookout Lighthouse unless you happen to be lucky enough to have a four-wheel drive vehicle. So I think the people of North Carolina will appreciate having a train that can take them there. As you can see, the Outer Banks are pretty long. <laughs> Even with a high-speed train, it still takes nearly an hour to travel all the way through the Outer Banks from the northernmost port uh, part to the southernmost part. Anyway, this is the shuttle line which splits away from the main line to go to the Cape Lookout Lighthouse. The line terminates here because there's literally nowhere else that it can go on this island. There's a sidewalk that leads to the lighthouse. This lighthouse used to have an attached building, and that's why the entrance is on the second floor. The building was destroyed in a hurricane, so they had to build a stairway to replace it. This lighthouse is on 24-7, which means it even operates during the day. It flashes once every 15 seconds. In other words, it moves twice as slowly as the reflector on the Cape Hatteras lighthouse. It also has a DCB-224 aero beacon, just like the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. This one looks a little bit more detailed because when making this lighthouse, I actually found out how to make these look better. I do plan on updating the animation for the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse to look this realistic as well, now that I know how to do it. The black diamonds on the Cape Lookout Lighthouse are facing north and south, and the white ones are facing west and east. The Cape Lookout Lighthouse was actually featured in a movie, but they mistakenly called it the Ocracoke Lighthouse in that movie. I forget the name of the movie. Anyway, Cape Lookout Lighthouse does not have a street address because there is no road on this island. Well, actually there is, but this is the only thing on this road. Its address is Cape Lookout Lighthouse Road in Harkers Island, North Carolina. Anyway, here are a few other landmarks on Cape Lookout near the lighthouse. The railroad ends at the end of the Cape, where a solar-powered facility is located, which is where the railroad gets its power. This is a lift bridge that travels across Lighthouse Bay. It is called the Black Diamond Lift Bridge because from the passenger's perspective, you can see the black diamonds facing north on the Cape Lookout Lighthouse. We're looking south right now. This is Shackleford Bank Station, located across Lighthouse Bay from the Cape Lookout Lighthouse on Shackleford Banks. From here you can see the solar powered facility that powers the Cape Lookout Shuttle Railroad. The next stop for the express train would be Oak Island, but I haven't gotten there yet because I'm still working on that section of the route and I haven't really expanded it south yet any further than here
Continuing south from Shackleford Banks, we are no longer in the Outer Banks. The next station stop will actually be in the North Carolina mainland at Atlantic Beach. And then there will be another stop at Carolina Beach and then an express stop at Caswell Beach. The line ends here so far because I haven't expanded it beyond Shackleford Banks. But real quick, let's, look, let's take a look at two other lighthouses I made for this game. The Baldhead Lighthouse. This lighthouse was decommissioned and replaced by the Cape Fear River Lighthouse, which was also decommissioned and replaced by the Oak Island Lighthouse. The Baldhead Lighthouse does not have a light because it is deactivated. So this one does not have a night animation. This lighthouse also used to have an automated radio beacon that would radio ships whenever they became within range of the lighthouse, but that was decommissioned as well. This is a rather small lighthouse compared to the other lighthouses in North Carolina. It is also the oldest standing structure here. Well, the oldest standing lighthouse, anyway. The other lighthouse I made is the Oak Island Lighthouse. Give me a minute. There's a lot of lighthouses on this list, so it's hard to find it. The Oak Island Lighthouse has a DCB-436 aero beacon. It has four reflectors instead of the usual two. It actually has eight, but the four on the bottom are only used as backups in case the four on the top stop working. This lighthouse is not painted. It is made out of concrete that just happens to be that same color. So the bottom third of the lighthouse is made of gray concrete, and then there's white concrete in the middle, and then the top layer is black concrete. The concrete was actually pigmented before it was poured. As usual, when a brand new lighthouse is built, it strays very far away from the traditional design of one. This lighthouse was built in the 1950s and was one of the last lighthouses to be built in this country. It's also the second most powerful, second only to the Charleston Lighthouse in South Carolina. The light from this lighthouse is so powerful that officials actually need to wear fireproof suits when servicing it, lest they get third degree burns from the light. The lighthouse flashes four times every 10 seconds. Like the Cape Lookout Lighthouse, this lighthouse also operates during the day, 24-7. Like I said, the top reflectors are the ones that are on. The ones on the bottom are only used as backups if the ones on the top fail. This animation actually took me 10 hours to make. It was not a simple task.
So anyway, like I said, if there are any lighthouses you would like to see me make for this game, just request them and I'll be happy to work on them whenever I have time.